Hey everybody, when Hummingbird released Mega Live Imaging to the marketplace, it really offered exceptional detail and image clarity, as well as a very simple system. Essentially what you have is a transducer and then the power and the ethernet cable. That's it, there's no extra modules or black box. It's an amazingly simple system. With the latest software update, it even adds further performance enhancements, better jig tracking, uh, compatibility with Hummingbird's new Mega Live Target Lock. The great thing about software updates is that there's zero cost for you as a consumer. There's no need for additional hardware updates or to buy an entirely new system. You do the software update and then you have all of these performance enhancements. Additionally, we added a new color palette. So when you add it all up, detail, image clarity, simplicity, added range, jig tracking, a new color palette, and of course compatibility with Mega Live Target Lock, there's been some amazing performance enhancements added to Hummingbird Mega Live Imaging. To do a software update for Hummingbird Mega Live, you simply need to go to the Hummingbird website at the very top of the page under support and then software update and scroll down to Mega Live. Hummingbird also offers some initial setup settings that you can use to get started when you set up your Mega Live imaging. For the best all around settings, Hummingbird recommends that you set your dynamic contrast to balanced and then your sensitivity in your contrast to 10. Again, keep in mind that that is just a starting point. What I'll typically do is start with my sensitivity. Set it to such a point where you can still track your jig at the given depth or range that you're fishing. Then from there, adjust your contrast. The sensitivity is basically going to adjust the signal strength related to that target. You'll notice when you drop your sensitivity all the way down that that target or your lure is going to disappear. So what I like to do is set it to such a point where I can still track my lure at whatever range or depth that I'm fishing. From there, adjust your contrast. A higher contrast will clean up a lot of the clutter on the screen. A lower setting is actually recommended to track your lure. So be aware that it is basically a balance between the sensitivity and the contrast. And then from there, you can adjust your dynamic contrast settings, be it balanced, high, or low. Play around with it a little bit and you'll be able to find the optimal settings for how you're fishing. In shallow water, if you're experiencing a lot of clutter on the screen, Hummingbird recommends to set your dynamic contrast to high and then your sensitivity and contrast to 10. But again, keep in mind that your sensitivity and your contrast at 10 are just starting points. If you want to clear up a lot of the surface clutter, your contrast will generally have to be set a little bit higher. In deeper water, you can set your dynamic contrast to low, adjust your sensitivity as needed, and this is where you could actually lower your contrast. Again, if you want to clean up the screen a little bit more, bump your contrast a little bit. So you can see how it's a balance between sensitivity, contrast, but at the end of the day, you have all the various settings you do to give you the most optimized image for Hummingbird Mega Live. So when you push menu once, you get into the Mega Live menu settings. You can see how you can adjust your settings here for my sensitivity. If I crank it up all the way, there's a lot going on with that screen. Basically what I want to do is I want to set it up in such a way where if I drop my lure down, I just want to be able to track it to where it just disappears but I still have my lure in sight. From there, what I can do is I can adjust my contrast. Notice what happens when I take the contrast and I drop it all the way down. There's a lot more surface clutter, a little bit more noise going on on the screen. Now again, for improved range, jig jacking performance, you can have your contrast set to low. But if you wanna clean up a lot of that clutter that's on the screen, go into the menu setting. Notice what happens when I move contrast higher up, even just a 10 there. Notice how much that actually cleans up the screen. The other advanced settings that you have here is your dynamic contrast, whether it's balanced, whether it's low, you can see that you'd certainly need some more filtering there, and then whether it's high, look how much more of a cleaner screen. And you could actually notice the fish are directly below the boat and the fish that are in that 30-40 range. So, like I said, it's really just a matter of adjusting your sensitivity as you need to, balance that out with your contrast, and you have the optimal settings. Nice size marks. Same difference. I like 13 now. All right. Okay, jig up. Somebody's there, right? Okay. There, that's better, I think. There's you. Right. I think that's me. That's Lane, yeah. Because we flipped it around. Let me just try this here, change this thing here. Okay, jig up again. Jig up, or just uh, jig. Somebody just, 
Oh, I gotta see who's who, because I changed it to port side. Who's that? Is that you? Jig up right now? I got fish on. There we go. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, just to have the same orientation, I change the side. You can do that. You can flip it around. Well, it's just because to have it oriented properly. Now what happens is that like it's the transducers, it's sideways, but it's facing outwards, right? So to have it oriented the way it was before, where it actually matches on the screen, right side, left side, it's yeah. actually backwards. So you have it oriented, right? Okay, because again, starboard down. mode, uh, when you have it in starboard, which is where it should be. That's more like as it relates to, you know, when it's in the forward mode, right? Yeah. But the problem is, is that now when you see your lures on the screen, they're going to be opposite. So you're just going to have to make that adjustment. And if you change it to port side, it'll flip it so that it actually coincides. Now your rods are out in front of the transducer, so to speak, that they're going to stay tracked better. So if you do use it in forward mode and you have it pointed that way, um, you'll need to reverse it back to starboard. Is there sensitivity yet? Let's see, it's not as... There's a bigger blob. Okay, I'm on the right hand you're side. You're right there now, yeah. So you're on the right side, eh? So yeah, you, yeah okay, that's you. So it's it's good now because I changed at the port. The transducer's facing out. Yeah, we're good. Oh, okay, yeah, we're good. We got fish on us. Again, I just want to clean this up a little more. We can just sit here for a minute and fish like this. I'm about to tie Jag up. <laughs> that's probably better. Jig up there, Lane? Looking yeah. at me. It's basically just video game fishing. <laughs> I was out two weeks ago and I was so glued to my Helix 15 that I got a frigging sunburn on my face like I've never experienced in many <laughs> years. And I'm pretty dark as it is. Actually, I think it was about a year ago this time. This It'd was the really first. Close, yeah, this yeah. was the first time, the same body of water yeah. that uh, we had actually all used Mega Live Imaging for the first time, and it's actually pretty amazing how far it's advanced. Oh, there you go. You got a fish on the screen. Sure, I do. Wow, I just had one come after you. Hot. No, it's amazing that you know with the same system, you know the same initial hardware, to have the software update as it is, you know, new color palette compatibility with. You know, target lock, improved range. Improved well, we lure said that tracking. a year. We said that a year ago today too. That, you know, the technology, the transducer is light years ahead of the programming still. Yeah. Well, I think the biggest thing with you know Hummingbird and the new Mega Live, like you said, was uh, being able to update oh, just, that transducer to uh, you oh, know, get the latest and greatest leash. technology without having to invest you know another two thousand dollars into a you know, already great product, right? It's amazing what they can do, you know, to just do a firmware update, you know, download it to, uh, obviously you'd want to do the update to your head unit first, download the Mega Live Imaging firmware update, plug it into your Hummingbird, and that of course pushes the firmware update to the transducer itself. Fish on. Well, and that's something I've been telling everybody Trouble. right from the get-go, was just how nice and easy it was to set up and use. When we first got our unit, it was just plug and play. Like we were catching fish right from day one. <laughs> there was very little learning curve. Yeah, I know. I was pretty impressed with it right out of the box when it first, like I said, the detail, the clarity, and of course the simplicity of the system. You basically just have the transducer and the two cables. That's it. It's such a simple system to use and set up. But yeah, you need bait. But yeah, I think it's a real big bonus to have this software update where it's it's free, man. You don't have to buy a whole new transducer hardware. Do the update, you get the improvement. I mean, I'm, you know, it'll be interesting to see. It's something that they continue to update as new features and enhancements come out. So, and it doesn't cost a dime. Yeah, and as we get that, oh, missed one. <laughs> <laughs> Biggest thing to keep in mind too is this product's only been out. That's so a year, less than a year. Yeah, we've been out a year, and we've had what is this the third update? I think this is about yeah the third software update. You know, certainly I would say the most significant one. You know, in terms Big of, fish. I mean, even with the range, um, while we were actually, you know, doing a, a little section on the other side of the lake there, and we had it maxed out to 150 foot range and forward mode, and we could basically see the bottom all the way out to the max range. You know, same thing goes with the depth. You know, when you're fishing deeper, some of the folks that are fishing, you know, deep water fish, lake trout, and so on, 
I mean, you can drop your lure down. I mean, you can track your lure down in 70 plus feet of water and see fish on the bottom and hopefully not miss them like Jag has, but uh, <laughs> Trap yeah. me right at the bottom. <laughs> It's definitely a pretty cool update. You know, even the uh, the updated color palette too. You know, we had a lot of consumer demand asking for that new color palette that was added. I think it's number 13. You know, with the blue water column and the gold and the red. So, you know, that's a welcome update as well. Well, and just being able to, you know, track your track your bait in real time on the screen and sure. watch fish come up. It's well, like Lane said earlier. It's kind of like making fishing into a bit of a video game. <laughs> Yeah, it's amazing how technology has evolved and even just when you think it, you know, gets as good as it is, you know, we push a further update and, and make it even better. So well, it's exciting to, stuff. I hate to say it, but within the increase in pressure, I mean, you gotta work a little bit harder to catch the fish these days and it really lets you tune in on what they're doing and what they're feeling and you can really finesse a fish into biting. It reminds me a lot of ice fishing. The real time sonar just lets you get that fish on your jig and you can play it up off the bottom and the rest is history. It's uh, it's pretty wild to watch, actually. Well, ice fishing is another great application. You know, whether you're scanning an area ahead of you, or I think what a lot of people do, you know, for ice fishing is they'll, uh, you know, they'll punch their hole and uh, they'll set up their lines, you know, all on the line where you know you can have three, four peoples in your, mm -hmm. in your shelter, and you can see every lure. When well, you know which person is which, exactly, you, you, know, you know where their actual orientation of them is. You can see the fish coming in. You can see the direction. Like generally when I go ice fishing now, I stick the unit between us yep. and we fish on either side of it and you're not um, with a traditional fashion where you're kind of almost both playing the same marks or you're not, you're unsure of who is who, Sure. you know, you know who's left and right. Yeah, it certainly adds a whole new dimension to ice fishing, that's for sure. Well, it's just, you know, amazing to see these fish coming up to your jig and swirling around and trying to see how they're reacting to whether or not you're moving your bait up and down or holding it still as to what's going to kind of intrigue them to bite. Yeah, it's amazing the amount of fish that you see come up to a lure. They seem excited about it. They, they, they get on it pretty quick and then all of a sudden they just kind of kind of makes you wonder where, you know, hey, is it time to change the lure? Is it the, you know, a different bait? Is it, are they wanting something a bit more aggressive or do they want it just held there? But I mean, that's the whole thing with, you know, sonar and, you know, particularly live imaging sonar, what it's going to show you. You know, you can see how those fish are responding to your bait and, you know, maybe change up your tactic as to what you see on the screen. You know, sometimes maybe that reaction strike where you need to, you know, give it a couple solid jerks there and then all of a sudden they commit. Yeah, or not move it at all. Or not move it at all. Let it sit there and, yeah. Fish aren't biting. Time for a siesta. And <laughs> <laughs> Good day for it, though. <laughs> Laying out in the hammock in the shade. <laughs> nice cool beverage. Old Scotty knows how to catch fish. <laughs> yeah. Couldn't have picked a better day, though. Gorgeous. I don't know one yet. Ooh. What's the count at? 16 to 5. Come on. I don't know. I'm just throwing out a number. Just catch, sometimes you just don't catch fish. Yeah, yeah I, I think it's just the existing mega live target lock. Oh, here we go. Oh, oh man. Ooh. He smoked it. Smashed that one. Yeah, mega live is a game changer. In addition to that, now you've got the target lock system and I can sit here and control this thing independently. I don't even have to get up and manually turn the pole anymore. So I can sit here and click this right, left, and steer around, steer around and track our jigs with little to no effort. So they're just making it too easy. As you can see, we've modified this to work with our existing bracketry. Um, this is our prototype version out for the first time today and we'll fine tune it from here but really happy with how this is all working and the fact that you could take this um, Altrex designed system and now put it on any boat, fish any boat and make it universal, well I mean the sky's the limit now. Look at that, you could clearly see that fish's tail. What's really neat is when you roll into a new spot, if you see something that catches your eye, you can now lock onto it 
with the structure and it'll keep pointing in that same heading. So as you drift by or troll by, it's gonna keep it orientated in the direction that you've seen that structure or that fish. Um, just another tool to have in your back pocket. Get that fish jag. It's swirling around. <laughs> yeah, this makes it too much fun. Yeah, now being able to integrate you know, the spot lock features on your trolling motor where you can get to a spot, like Landon said, um, stop, use the virtual anchor, um, and then also use the virtual anchor on your target lock system uh, to lock on to something like a rock pile or a piece of structure um, so that you can basically just sit there and fish and fish that rock pile, um, you know, without having to adjust any of your motors or your mega live transducer. Eat it. We got some fish roaming around here. You keep scaring them off. Stop looking over the edge of the boat. Too slow. <laughs> so many little ones cruising around, eh? I'm just cruising up, looking, swimming away. Here's one coming. Nope. It's always fun when you can jig your jig and steal it back from your friend. Oh, he's on you again. They're all on you. Except that one. <laughs> I was wondering if you're gonna set the hook on that one or not. Had to give you a chance. Well, at least you're within three now. <laughs> I feel like I just took the lead. Another new exciting product release this year from Humminbird is the new VX Lake MasterCards. With the new VX Lake MasterCards, you actually have selectable color palettes. In addition, you can choose from three chart preset views. So you can customize the map how you want it to view, whether you're navigating or whether you want the best detail for while you're fishing a certain location. Additionally, we've added Smart Strike technology. With Smart Strike, you can actually plug in all the different parameters that you want from the time of year, your target species, and a bunch of other different settings where Humminbird will take that information and suggest certain areas on the lake that you might want to fish. It really is a great technology. Additionally, with the premium cards, we have satellite imagery overlay. On the HD surveyed waters, the satellite imagery overlay for both land and water will allow you to basically view extra detail on the shoreline, docks, boathouses, and so on. You can even adjust the layering and the transparency of that map that you see on your screen as well as contour relief shading. Contour relief shading is going to add a whole new dimension in terms of detail on the map just because of the texture. And it's almost like if you remove the contours, the map looks 3D-ish. You layer the contours on top of that. Contour relief shading just gives you amazing detail. So with the new Lake Master VX cards, we've basically taken Lake Master mapping, the detail that you would expect with our Lake Master HD surveyed waters, to a whole new level. One of the first things you'll notice with the new Lake Master VX card is the amazing color rendering of the contours. You can select from multiple different color options. When we go into the menu settings, under contours, you'll see that there's a variety of different color palettes that we can choose from, from the menu option. As we get into the chart settings, your user chart settings allow for a whole range of multiple other options, including setting your depth contours, everything from your contour colors, your density, your color palettes. Layers are going to allow you to adjust your shaded relief, your aerial imagery. Contour relief shading adds a whole new mention of detail to your map. To illustrate what contour relief shading does, when I go into the menu settings here and I go into contours, watch what happens when I actually turn the contour lines off. 
contour relief shading actually adds a great deal more texture to the map, almost like a 3D type of image. When you layer that over top of the contours themselves, you have even greater detail. Another great feature to adjusting your chart presets is that you can go here and go to your navigation preset, for example, and you can set it so that it looks basically like a paper map, especially when you're navigating bodies of water that have a lot of islands and nav roots and detail. When you have all those contours and there's so much information, for some folks, it might be a little bit daunting while they're navigating. What they're really looking for is a nice, clean map to view from. So when I go into my menu settings here, you'll notice that I can go into my preset, this happens to be navigation. I can adjust my depth highlights, my chart objects, anything related to the depth and contours functions. Of course, my layers. In this case, what I've done is I've selected my layers where I disabled the shaded relief in the aerial imagery. So in this case, you can see it's a really nice clean map. There's no satellite imagery overlay. I've disabled that function. What I've also done is I've taken the contour density and I've set it to low. This way you don't have one foot contours because you may not necessarily want that when you're navigating. You want a nice clean map. So this is a great thing to be able to do to set your presets exactly how you want. When I get into my user preset, how I'll basically have that set up is all of the features that I want to enable in there. My satellite imagery overlay, my contour relief shading. It's just an amazing looking map. And again, what you can do is set up these presets exactly how you want them to be. The great thing with the satellite imagery overlay is it also allows you to adjust the transparency of that. If I want to see through the contours and maybe see docks or boathouses or even bottom structure on clear waters in particular, maybe there's transition edges, weeds, rock piles, things like that, you can actually see that layered over on the transparency on the water. In fact, in this case, what I'll do is I'm just simply going to go to my layers tab there. I'm going to drop down shaded relief transparency and what do you notice right away? Check it out, you can still see the contours on your map, you can see the colors, but what you notice is that right here in this marina, there's all the docks and everything on the water. It's really amazing to be able to see that detail on the water overlaid. So in some situations, maybe if you're fishing a dock pattern, well, the great thing is you're not just kind of looking down the shoreline, you can actually check on your sonar unit, adjust your transparency layer, and you can see all the docks and structures and different things that you're looking for. On a clear lake, I'm gonna show you something that's pretty neat. On this body of water, when I adjust the transparency, watch what happens. What you can actually see is you can still see the contour lines, but notice the detail that you actually see, especially because of the clarity of this body of water. You can see the reefs here. You can see the edges. I mean, the transition lines from vegetation to sand. It's amazing, the detail. So imagine being on this body of water here, and maybe you're fishing a weed edge. Well, you can actually see that on your screen while you're fishing it. You can see the shallow reefs, you can see the structure, but notice this, look at the vegetation, look at the sand bottom right there. In fact, it's really interesting the way the contours actually align with the structure. So you can view through your map into the actual satellite imagery on the lake. The Lake Master VX maps are gonna be an exciting new addition to the line, packed with features available for Manitoba, Ontario, and Quebec, and coming this fall. Be sure to check them out.